everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to mass update a case within Salesforce or a bunch of cases within Salesforce. Now, unfortunately, because the mass update tool that Salesforce has for some objects is not available to the cases object. So this is going to be a workaround to update a lot of cases. You can do this based upon a set of criteria or uh, just based upon whatever your scenario is. And we're gonna be doing this through Workbench. You can also do this through, through the data loader, but it is a lot easier and a lot faster and a lot less of a headache to do it through the Workbench tool. So I'll be showing you how to use that. So here we have the open cases within our Salesforce org. This is a test org. I should get that out of the way. So then you don't think that these are open cases because September to December, that's a long time for a case to be open. Anywho, I'm getting sidetracked. Um, I want to update any case owner from me to Jane Doe. Let's pretend that I'm leaving my company. And so we want to update all these cases to go to Jane Doe. Now you can do this for other things. Maybe you want to move any low priority cases to a medium priority. Um, you would be able to do that this way if you wanted to change any, really just about any field, you'd be able to do that using Workbench. So let's go ahead and jump into Workbench and get this first started. So Workbench is a great tool that you can use in conjunction with Salesforce to query using the Salesforce object query language or SQL. It's very similar to SQL. It pretty much is SQL, just <laughs> with Salesforce object. You are also able to do a lot of the actions that you would be able to do for the data loader such as updating and uploading and inserting and all these different things. And the reason why I like this one is because uh, the you'll see this in just a sec, but it's a lot easier to update your SQL query in Workbench than it is to upload uh, update it and make changes to it in the data loader. Also, I like that it's in my browser tab rather than a full-on application. So I am going to go jump to the SQL query for the cases object. All right, let's hit select. And now this is going to take us to the query editor so we can build our query this way. And it makes it, our workbench makes it really, really simple to update it that way. So I'm going to go with ID. That's something that's really important to grab when you are updating this way because the ID is what Salesforce is going to use to match the same records to same records and update the records from what we have changed. Um, I'm going to select is closed because that's good to know. We are going to be changing the owner ID, so that's something that we need. Oh, also, um, if you want to select more than one field here, I'm on Mac, so I hit command and then I clicked on it or else it would jump you around and you'd only be able to select one. Um, it doesn't work if you hit shift because then it'll grab all of the fields in between. Let's go ahead. I'm going to also select status and that should be good. Now I'm gonna filter the results down by cases that are owned by me. And how I'm gonna do that is by grabbing my owner ID or my, my Salesforce ID. So I'm gonna select to owner ID is equal to, and then go back to Salesforce, go into a case. And then uh, over case owner, I'm gonna select my name. And then up here in the URL, you should be able to see a series of 18 digits. That's going to be the record ID of whatever record that you're on. And this is a fun thing about Salesforce is when you're doing any type of data manipulation, you can just go to the record, grab the ID. If you are in Lightning, it's going to be 18 digits. If you are in Classic, it's going to be 50. If you are in an org that uses both Classic and Lightning, just be aware that Classic has a 15 digit ID number and Lightning has an 18 digit that I've run into issues with that in the past. So just be aware of that. I don't wanna grab the slash there just the ID. Okay, and then I'm gonna paste that into here, run this query. All right, looks like there are about six-ish records that are mine. I am going to move the view as from a list to CSV, which will allow us to put this into our spreadsheet, all right? And then I'm going to over to our spreadsheet. I'm going to file, import this spreadsheet here. Um, and one thing about Salesforce is that every single object has a series of three digits in their IDs. So you know which objects it's on. 
So for cases, it's going to be 500. For whatever object my owner ID comes from, it's going to be 005. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go grab Jane Doe's user ID from Salesforce. Okay, let's go to cases. Find one with Jane Doe. I'm gonna go to Jane Doe's person. Grab her ID. And I know that mine ends with Q-A-Y. And hers ends with Q-A-A. -A, so that's one thing I want to pay attention to as I move this all down. All right. And now all of those have been updated. I'm going to update this to be case updates. And then download the CSV. Okay. Now that we have that, we can go back to Workbench. I'm just going to go back to the beginning of Workbench. And log in again. All right, now I'm gonna jump to update and then choose the cases object again. Select from file. And then choose that CSV that we just downloaded, hit next. It's going to have us map the different fields that we have. We only had three, and so it is going to map those three. And map, process, and confirm update. All right, and I do remember that it had six records on it, and it had completed in zero failures. Let's go back to that list view of our cases. And everything that was mine is now Jane Doe's. And there were six, um, but it's only showing four because we're on the Open cases, if we were to go to my cases, there shouldn't be any of them. And then if we went to closed cases, we should see a bunch of Jane Does. So that is the workaround for getting around that mass update tool, not being there for the cases object. Um, I did the owner ID because that's one that I'm familiar with. And it's a common scenario that you might run into within Salesforce, but you can do it with just about any other field that you find on just about any single object. If you go back to Workbench, I can show you there are a lot of different objects that you can work with. Log in. All right, let's just do a circle query here and I'll show you the objects. This might be a comprehensive list of all the objects that are in that org. And if we kept going down, we'd find more. But that is just a quick tutorial on how to get around that mass update tool not being there and how to use Workbench within Salesforce. I hope that you found this helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a like. Subscribe. You can check out the courses down below in the description box or on salesforceupscale.com. You can connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter at Emily Call MBA. Thank you so much. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.